Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be painting this fantasy winter themed landscape called Winter Whispers and we're using the following colors titanium white, light blue violet, and purple violet on an 11 by 14 primed stretched canvas with a round paint chalk brush. This brush is two to three inches. You don't have to have this brush. You can use any large blending brush. This is just for creating the background. So I'm taking both the purple and the blue and I'm starting to paint the canvas diagonally first and I'm going to cover this whole canvas before beginning the next step. Okay, so now I'm going to take a large filbert brush with titanium white. I'm going to just pick up a little bit of that blue-purple mixture. And I'm going to start coming in with um, the lines, flowy lines for the river. So it's going to be wider, wider brush strokes coming towards us in the foreground and shorter for the background. So this is just a light layer to begin with. And then I'm going to come in and create little slopes and peaks for some snow off to the side and then a few diagonal lines for some mountains. We want to have a very uh, soft sloping mountain range here off to the left. So I'll create a few different sizes for my mountains, um, just keeping it really simple. One side of the mountains um, facing to the right side or towards the center will be brighter with a highlight on them from the moonlight. And then the other side will be more in shadow. Now there are a few different brushes that you can use for this. Uh, for the mountains, you could use a flat brush. You can even use a, um, a well, a filbert brush, of course. But I was going to say um, a palette knife. Um, so a lot of people, a lot of artists, like to use palette knives for um, painting mountains. So that's something that you can use if you want. I just prefer a brush. And here I'm creating larger slopes to create more of a foreground feel. So when you keep it smaller in the distance, that will help create that perspective of things that are farther away. So painting wet on wet and that's uh, a really easy way to create all those mid-tones in a painting um, immediately so when you're applying the paint to wet paint you're able to get a very smooth um, blended look somewhat like oil paint um, if you're uh, not a fast painter that's okay you can just have like a little spray bottle like a little mister that you can mist your palette with or um, the painting the canvas itself and I'm going to come in and just add a moon right here. It was going to be a crescent moon, and then I decided to make it more of a fuller moon, but I want it to be brighter on one side and then more in shadow on the other side. I'm going to smooth this out and make it a little bit larger. Soften all around it before applying a little bit more white paint um, to create those brighter, bolder highlights. And I'm using a little filbert brush here. I really like my filbert brushes. It's nice because they have that round... Um, end to them. So when you want to create something round or something with a softer edge, then the filbert brush is really the one to go to. And so here I'm just pulling, trying to sweep one brush stroke to make it nice and seamless. Thick white paint, and then it's going to get a little bit uh, darker. The paint uh, towards the left will kind of just come off on my brush naturally, leaving it more shadowed and darker. So brighter on the right and less paint on the left. Okay, so for our next step, still taking my large filbert brush, you can switch over um, and use different sizes of filberts for your cloud effect. So here I'm just doing little half circles, little little scoops like this to make it look like there's lots of clouds. I really love that kind of a swirly cloud pattern up in the sky so I'm going to just really really um, exaggerate and add a lot of these clouds and then as the painting progresses I'm going to make them look really swirly and whimsical and magical and like I said just really exaggerate it and have fun with fantasy in this in this painting. I'm going to come in down here and add a few more mountains making them shorter and shorter creating that perspective once the paint dries a little bit more and sets in it's going to look a little darker so i want to come in and brighten that up and just add a little bit more of my white so i'm going to bring this mountain here on the far left up a little higher 
This will just create even more of that perspective. And then push and turn quickly with my brush to make, to make some more of these clouds. I want them to look very rounded on the top. So just pushing, twirling, and twisting as much as you want to create all those swirly kind of looks to your painting. Now this is a good brush to use for and technique for making waves in the water as well. Quite often I use this brush in um, my water paintings if I'm you know working on a seascape and I want to make it look like there's those big uh, waves curling over then that's a the perfect brush to use. Sometimes I'll use uh, a fan brush as well. So here I've got a round oval stippling brush but it's soft it's not too too stiff on the end. Um, I kind of like a brush that's a little bit in between and I'm just taking a little bit of white and I'm tapping in. I was going to make little bushes here on the side but as the painting progresses you'll notice that it starts to look more like um, slopes and uh, snow instead of bushes but it's just a really fun brush to use. Um, I don't remember what the make of this brush is but I know I got it at Michael's and I'm going to just pull and flick straight down underneath and then across to make it look like uh, water and kind of almost give it that uh, skating rink look, that ice look like it's frozen over. And I'm going to tap in a little bit more, creating some more uh, slopes, highlights, and shadows here. So just pulling and sweeping the rest of the paint that's left in my brush, which is hardly anything. It's pretty much just a dry brush effect right now. And I'm going to start creating some swirly, subtle swirls right now, movement. A little bit that come out in the water. And then I'm going to switch over to a flat brush to soften the base of these mountains up a little bit, making them uh, kind of look a little bit farther away, blurred a little bit. Add a little bit more white to the top. And then I'm going to actually switch over to a little flat brush and I'll show you how I use this for a palette knife. So I turn my hand over and place my finger right here with paint on the very underneath the or on the bottom of the brush and lightly pull and drag and it'll leave all those little spaces and gaps that make your mountains look uh, 3D and more natural looking. So you just want to have uh, lots of highlights and shadows on your mountains to make them look 3D, all those little peaks and ridges. And then I'm just pulling and flicking just a little subtle hint of the other side to make it look more 3D. Now taking a little bit of water with the white paint there, making more of a transparent color, I'm going to line my brush up and do light little flicks just by pulling and flicking, turning my wrist. So we create a little instant forest back here, so easy. And then I'm sliding my brush quickly up and down for some more. So there's a few ways of creating the reflection in the water. You can do that or you can turn your brush the other way and lightly press, pull and flick. And then I'm going to just come in with a clean line of white, very thin. And then a little in the distance. I'm going to add some more white now to the moon. Line it and then start tapping, wiggling in all different directions. Making, making it look patchy so there's some shadow left under there and some brighter areas. Now with the leftover paint in my brush, I'm just going to dry brush, scumble around to give a soft glow on the outside of the moon. I'll be adding some more clouds up and around the moon as well, making some smaller and some larger ones. Now I've got a fan brush that I'm going to use. And this is just a medium sized one, I think a number six. I've got a little water on my brush as well as the titanium white. And I'll show you how I use this to create a little bit of an instant forest as well. So it gives you guys a few options. You can use a flat brush or a fan brush. And 
then down below, lightly pull and flick down. So just like the top, but you're just doing it in the opposite direction. And then if you want to look like, want it to look like your trees are a little fuller, you can tap in there to um, make it look like there's a few little branches and a little bit more detail on your trees. But they're so far away, you really don't have to do that. So I'm just going to finish these up by adding a few more little flicks of white here and there and then I'm going to switch over to my filbert brush again, a smaller one to create some um, smaller looking little half circles here and some brighter ones. I really want uh, to work on my con contrast a little bit more here, so more light and dark, uh, a little bit more dramatic and just start turning my brush to make it look like the clouds are going up and almost kind of wrapping around the moon cradling it sort of and have that moon look like it's nestled in there and then i'm going to start making larger ones and just constantly overlapping and that really gives you that bubbly cloud effect so i'll be making larger ones and then the ones that are larger on the outside are going to start to swirl over and curl over and have that beautiful whimsy magical look and sweep up towards the left side of the canvas so it all looks like it's one. I want this painting to feel like everything is all connected and flowing into one another. So I'm going to keep on adding more white paint as I'm closer to the moon and work that paint out of my brush towards the outside making it look softer. You want to have, you want to make sure that you have areas in your paintings that are softer, blurrier, um, less in focus, um, just so that you have that nice balance and it's a little bit easier on the eyes. So pick a few spots um, or things in your paintings that you want to have a little bit brighter and draw your eye to more. And I'm just going to add more white paint up here, always going over to the right side of the moon and adding some more white to brighten that up. I'm going to come in now and add a few little trees here that are um, closer, a little bit closer to us and just start tapping for the top of the tree and then pushing and tapping side to side, gradually making the tree a little bit wider as I get down to the bottom. And I'm just using the end of my brush. So you only want to load your brush um, on the part of the brush that you're going to be using. So just using when I'm making small trees, I don't need to push down and use the whole width of the brush. Um, so I just load my brush with the paint on the very end of it. I'm going to soften up the clouds on the outside a little bit more here, giving them more of a blended look. And I think I want to add one more tree here. So I'm going to take a little bit more white, load my brush up here, pull up for a little tree trunk and start at the top, tapping really lightly side to side again, working my way down to the bottom. And I just want to make this tree a little bit taller, it kind of matches um, the angle of the mountains. So bigger to smaller. And then I'm just going to pull a few lines down here in the foreground and start uh, working my way into creating a little pathway. I'll then make a little fence and another couple of trees. Now it's a really fun way to approach painting um, without a reference photo. I love, I just love the freedom of not having something that I have to look at and try to copy. I like doing things intuitively and just trusting my gut and instinct and my own creativity. Now, of course, you guys are watching this and and uh, painting step by step with me. So um, that's okay that there's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm flattered that you guys want to paint along with me. Um, but once in a while for a painting exercise for you guys, this is to help improve your creativity. Um, don't look at anything. Um, do this, you know, maybe once a week, or if that's too much for you, maybe once a month, 
or a couple times a month, but try your best to see what you can come up with without looking at anything at all. Um, it helps uh, you learn a lot about yourself and what you're capable of and what you can, co- what you can come up with on your own. Um, but when learning how to paint, of course, it's important to uh, learn the steps and the color mixing and and try to replicate uh, images. So that's all part of the learning process, but it's good to change it up and do a little bit of everything. So here I'm just adding in an old fence um, covered in snow. So the fence posts are not all straight or perfectly spaced, um, but you do want to make sure that they're taller in the foreground and a bit wider so that you can create that foreground and make it feel like we're closer to this part of the fence and then to make it look like it's farther away in the distance you'll make them thinner less paint and shorter so i'm just using my little filbert brush still and you can use a flat brush for this if you want even a liner brush and i'm going to pull the boards through the center and i want to make it look like there's a lot of snow on them so i'm going to apply a thick line of paint on some areas of the fence that are closer to us this is where we would see that the most in detail and focus um, not further away because it would we, we just don't see everything that's farther away as detailed as we do up front so i'll work on adding some highlights and shadows here um, i won't be adding any more color i'm just using um, the colors the base color that we have underneath for my shadows and just by applying the white paint here and there that that makes it look like there's more of a shadow so you don't need to come in with any other colors you could if you want though but i like this soft look with this powdery bluey purple background i think it's a really nice um monochromatic color choice and you can use this on christmas ornaments um over the years you know if you guys have probably seen my Christmas ornament tutorials. I've got uh, two or three um, different videos on how I make my own Christmas ornaments. And I've been making those for um, well over 17, 18 years. And I take these little landscapes that I make up and I, and I make them on the ornaments. Hand paint every one of my ornaments. So I pick different colors. So this is one of my monochromatic designs that I use. Um, the purple and the blue together with a white. Um, you can do this in emerald green or turquoise, phthalo blue, cobalt blue, um, beautiful crimson red or scarlet red is nice, pink, or even just black and white. So you can see here I'm coming in with thicker amounts of paint. I love this 3D look. So once it dries, it's gonna you'll be able to feel that. It really gives you that three-dimensional look. I love a painting that really invites you in and makes you feel like you can just kind of like run away and and jump into that painting or walk right into it so i'm going to do these little curvy lines for the distance that make it look like that pathway leads off and curls and wraps around um, probably taking us to a cozy little cottage somewhere and I'm going to just add a little touch of white on the tops of my fence posts and at the base to make it look like they're buried in snow and the snow is coming up just over the base there. And then I'm going to come in and start adding a large tree on the far right. And I'll be using a filbert brush for that as well. So lining my brush up slightly on an angle here and just make sure you have like a little tree top up there long and skinny little line and then you start tapping in lightly at first for some delicate baby little branches and then as you get down midway towards the bottom you can push a little bit harder with your brush so when painting bigger trees you're going to use um, either a larger filbert brush or a smaller one like this but you're going to push harder to get that full width of the brush to create larger branches and i'm going to add some more paint in some areas some of my branches to make them look like they're really covered in snow and they're a lot brighter but i won't do that everywhere i want there to be some mid-tones and some lighter areas um, but before i do that 
I'm gonna come in here and place this little tree on an angle. I love it when trees are going in different directions. I love leaning trees. I like to have um, a variety of different angles to my trees and my paintings. It adds character and it's a little bit more realistic, isn't it? Trees are not perfectly straight up and down all the time. So same technique here, I'm just pushing and tapping for my branches and pulling up a little skinnier peak to the top of my trees. Okay, now I'm going to start focusing on the sky and creating all these little swirly looking clouds. So I'm going to add more white to my brush and go over creating some new clouds and um, going over some of my older ones. And I want them to be working their way up and blending into uh, the rest of the sky here. So I'm going to go over that blue, bluey purple, just creating, it'll create lighter shades of them. You'll, you won't be covering up all that color because it's going to dry a little bit darker. Acrylic paint always does. And then I'm purposely pulling out some of the white paint off of the tree and pulling and swirling, twirling that paint around the tree to make it look almost like ribbons. And I'll do the same thing to the other tree here on the right. And there's not quite enough paint there to work with, so I'm going to come over with some fresh paint. And I'm going to pull, swirl. It's so much fun creating these swirly lines. And I've got another painting tutorial that's a lot more colorful. It's actually called Ribbons, and I'll leave a link at the end of this video or down below. You guys want to check that out it's of a Christmas tree all lit up with beautiful colorful ribbons wrapping around it all around the sky and it's a snowman decorating it it's a really really pretty one so if you guys are into more whimsical fantasy like paintings you might learn a lot from that one or just get inspired so I'm gonna really exaggerate these swirls a lot more on this right side making some larger ones and just keep building this up, adding more and more. And then I'll eventually come in and add um, sort of a, a strip of stars into one of those ribbon-like clouds um, towards the end of the video on the far left. And I'll be using a little liner brush for that. Okay, now taking a little bit more of my white paint and if yours isn't flowing easily like this, you might need to have a little bit of water in your brush. Um, but be mindful if you have too much water, it's either going to drip or you're going to be left with none of the pattern showing because um, the wet um, paint will kind of make it seem, the water in your brush will make it seem like it's showing up on the canvas, but once it dries, it'll disappear. So you need to have equal amounts um, if you need to help your paint flow. So I'm just very lightly pulling and dragging and sweeping up over the mountains, longer sweeps here, and then they get uh, smaller and curlier around those trees. I'm going to add a little bit more white now to this side of the mount or moon mountain. <laughs> and then remember keeping it patchy, leaving some areas with just shadow underneath. going to come in with some fresh lines and half circles here, these little scoops for my clouds, and then pull a few more swirls in here. You see how important it is to take your time to add all these layers. It really makes a difference because you have all those soft um, layers in between. And then I want to have some swirls wrapped around down here as well. I thought that would look pretty to just try to tie in um, the ribbons down here around the fence. It's of course up to you guys to add as much as you want or as few ribbons as you want. 
So I'm going to continue adding just a little bit more here, and then I'm going to start working on the stars up in the sky. Okay, so after adding a few more swirls and blending out a little bit, I'm going to pick up some fresh white paint and use a thicker mount here for the tops of these mountains. They're kind of uh, faded away now, so I want to just make sure that they're separate from the sky. And then I'm going to come over and add some more snow to my treetop and a few other branches on both the trees, this one here and the one on the far right. So I want it to look like some of the branches are brighter and have a bit more of a, a snowy effect on them and a highlight to them. I don't want them to all be, like, it'll look flat in your painting if everything's the same tone or the same um, amount of paint. So you need to have some areas where you're just going to have uh, thicker amounts of paint to make it look brighter and just a little bit more richer. So you can really see how much I'm using here and I'm kind of just turning my brush on the side as well where I want to have a little bit of a thinner brush effect or brush stroke. And then I'll just exaggerate these swirls down here a little bit more. And I'm going to start pulling the rest of the paint out of the brush now which is hardly anything so just a dry brush here. Build up a little bit of a glow before I start adding my bright twinkling stars. So when painting stars, you need to have a finer brush. A liner brush works really, really well. Um, there's so many different sizes of liner brushes out there. Now, depending on the size of the stars that you're working on, um, this is an 11 by 14 canvas. So, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not a very big canvas and my stars are really small. So I'm using my micro mini liner brush. Um, if you're having trouble finding these, um, you can actually um, Google search the micro mini liner brushes. You might end up finding them in um, nail salon sections. Um, nail artists use them for creating art on, on their nails. I know it sounds kind of funny, but some of the best brushes out there are not even, not even in an artist section. They're in makeup sec section or salon sections. So um, think outside of the box when shopping around for your brushes, guys. Um, I found some of the best brushes for uh, my liner brushes in, in those areas. So I'm going to just smooth out the shape of my moon here and just make sure it's nice and soft looking on the outside and then just steadying my pinky here on the canvas making sure that my painting is dry first underneath i'll start i always put my pinky there when i need a lot of um uh, i need to be really steady and it just helps stabilize my hand and um, lets me um, create some better lines and my hand is it's just really a lot easier to do this guys so make sure you have a dry spot on your canvas where you can just steady your hand there and then add a little dab here and there pull and flick tiny little lines and I often soften with my finger to create like a little soft glow or a little haze around the stars as well no, I don't do it to all of them but I do like to do that to a few of them i um, giving that illusion that you know, some are farther away, some are glowing, and some are clearer and more in focus. 
And then I'm going to do a lot of little dabs, making it look like they're smaller and smaller, and they're kind of going into that strip that pulls down towards the mountains and the trees. So I'll add a few more details here, a few more stars, little dots and dabs, and as I finish up adding the final details to this painting, I want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, um, and thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you guys next time soon in another video. Take care, everybody. Bye.